What's up guys? I'm on my way to the ballpark right now to cover my last game of the Texas Rangers 2016 season for Blitz Weekly as a journalist. I'll be sitting in the press box like I always do. But I want to talk about the season because a lot of people were projecting the Rangers to win the AL West or at least get the wild card, myself included. So they're missing the playoffs. It's going to be the Twins, the Yanks, the Red Sox, the Indians, and the Astros. So the wild card team, the Yanks, and the Twins will play at best of one. See how that goes. So why did the Rangers fail? Let's think about that one. So this year in baseball, we've seen a huge uptick in, we've seen a huge uptick in, some guy yelled at me and distracted me. We've seen a huge uptick in strikeouts and homers, just as a trend in the game. I like to, in, a, in general, players who strike out a lot but have power, kind of like a metagame shift in baseball. And the Rangers have a lineup filled with these type of people. Mike Napoli can't hit for any average. He's been below 200 most of the year. Ruggie Odor has absolutely no plate discipline. None. Not a zero. He'll swing at anything. I've seen him strike out on that high fastball pitch about a million times. He's batting 168 on the road. 168. 168. Ruggie. Six-year deal. Joke. I miss Ian Kinsler. What else? We got Joey Gallo. He's actually been great. A lot of power, a lot of walks. Now his average is kind of low, but really got to watch the on-base percentage with him because he walks so much. So the thing is, is Gallo is really good and Gallo has improved a lot this year. But thing you have to consider, if you pair him with three other guys who are pretty much raw power, tons of strikeouts, means you have like gaping inconsistent holes in your lineup. Carlos Gomez is kind of like that, although his average isn't nearly as bad as Ruggie or Napoli's. So that's something you just have to consider. You stack your lineup with power hitters who strike out a lot, not a lot of consistency. Shin Su Chu's been good. Delano De Shields has been excellent with speed. And they're at the top of the lineup getting things done. Elvis Andres has had a career year, you know, contract year. No, Mom Rosario has been very good at home, been not very good on the road. Mm, you know, Lou Croy was so bad we had to trade him off. Little Robinson's done well. What about the pitching, though? The pitching, the crux of the issue. Cole Hamels, completely over the hump as far as his career goes. This ain't 2009 Cole Hamels. This ain't Phillies era Cole Hamels. This is one of those older pitchers whose stuff is declining and he's just trying to figure out how to make it work. If you look at Cole Hamill's strikeout rate this year, down tremendously. If you look at his walks last year, up tremendously. He was top 10 in walks along with Martin Perez. Martin Perez, walk machine, inconsistent, has a lot of really bad starts. He was actually so wildly inconsistent last year that the Rangers elected to use one-armed Colby Lewis in game three of the ALDS. Martin's just not a very good player. He's way, way better during the day and at home, so if you ever go to Sunday games, you see a lot of Perez. But Perez just more the same, you know, kind of below average and inconsistent. Andrew Kashner was one of the lone bright spots this year. Although, with only a one-year deal, he's gone. So, yeah, there's that. Yu Darvish got traded at the deadline. Hmm. Well, he's going to be gone at the end of the year, so whatever. AJ Ace Griffin hurt most of the year. Pretty inconsistent. Can't pitch against power-hitting teams. But he is pretty damn good when he pitches well. He's got that loopy curve. Now let's talk about the bullpen. Tony Barnett, horrifically bad all year. Jose LeClerc, wildly inaccurate. Sam Dyson was so bad that he entered the season with the full beard, and every time he blew a game, he shaved some facial hair off. By the time he was out of facial hair, he was a San Francisco giant. 
So he was horrible. Let's see. Keone Kella's been decent but hurt a lot. Matt Bush was okay, couldn't cut at his closer and then got hurt. Not a lot, not a lot of good stuff. So overall, let's think about the Rangers year as I move away from the crowd a little bit. I would say the story of the year for the entire year is that right when it looked like the Rangers were going to go on a winning streak, get it together, and finally transition their season into being worthless into something good, they would shit the bed and be like, get swept versus a bad team or just really lose all the momentum. We saw this so many times throughout the year. Uh, the Tampa Bay series was really bad. Uh, getting four games swept by the O's was bad. Getting swept by the A's twice, season-endingly bad. So the Astros looked great. They had pretty much the best lineup throughout the entire year. And the thing you have to remember about the Astros is they have pop and batting average. Astros and Rangers were like one and two for homers pretty much all year. But the Astros were one in batting average while the Rangers were 27, 28. So you gotta consider that. And the Rangers, of course, we already know the playoff teams are gonna be there eliminated. So I'm trying to think of anything that I missed. I didn't like make a prep list. I don't have anything in my other hand. I'm not reading talking points like Marco Rubio. Just going off the top like clips. So let me just kind of think. Delano, like I said, Delano DeShields was god tier this year. Adrian Beltre playing in the World Baseball Classic and then aggravating his uh, leg injury really sucked. And he's essentially playing on one leg at the end of the year, but Beltre brings so much to the table in terms of team leadership that you can't really put like a number figure or value on not having him because it was such a big deal. All right, so that concludes the 26 or 2017 Ranger video. So 2010 and 2011, the team goes to the playoffs twice, World Series twice, little hiatus, and then 15 and 16, ALDS losses to the Blue Jays and now no playoffs. So they're losing a lot of key pieces and really the, the bullpen was just horrifically bad this year. All right, peace out.